Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to talk about AWS Cloud Shell and how it can make your life as a developer or a system administrator much easier. So what is AWS Cloud Shell? Just imagine guys, if you have a, a terminal on a browser on your fingertips, which you can access AWS resources uh, without uh, having much complexity of setting up your environment with uh, security key, access key, and profiling and all that. Just imagine if you are somebody's offloading all this uh, headache of complexities by setting up the environment by someone else, that's where this AWS Cloud Shell is all about. So basically, it is a browser-based shell that lets you run commands and scripts directly into your AWS console. It comes with pre-installed tools such as AWS CLI, Python, or basic compilers, and other common tools that you need to manage your AWS resources. So why actually we need this uh, AWS Cloud Shell? Just imagine, guys, you might be versatile with your uh, interacting with AWS resources as a command line, it's sometimes necessary. Regardless how much time you spent on setting up your Terraform infrastructure as a code or a cloud formation or any other automation tool you might, but sometimes you really need to have AWS CLI at your disposal for a quick interaction with AWS resources. Now you might be wondering why you should use AWS Cloud Shell instead of using your local terminal or a command prompt. The answer is simple and straightforward, it is at your convenience. You don't have to worry about setting up a local environment or installing the necessary tools. All you need is a browser and internet connection, and you can start working right away without bothering about anything else. Plus, if it is a cloud, you can access your work from anywhere. And dealing with the credentials, tooling, uh, setting up the environment, all that, these are all been offloaded and taken care of by AWS Cloud Shell itself so that you can focus more on what you need and how you want to uh, you know, get you interact with AWS resources. So it's going to offload all your time consuming activities. Now let's jump into a quick look up how AWS Cloud Shell works. And when you first launch Shell, how it is going to interact and how you're going to keep this uh, cloud shell more uh, useful in your in your day-to-day -day routine. So let's jump into a quick demo for it. Now let's see guys how this uh, cloud shell is going to help us. And as soon as you log into your AWS management console, as you can see in the screen, here is the upside corner. This is the cloud shell. When you click on this, the cloud shell is going to open on the same window. Here you can have whether you want full screen or whether you want, you know, you can alter the size of the screen, how you want to manage it. And at the same time you have, you want to access a new tab. You can just click on the new tab here. It's going to show you in the new tab of this cloud shell. And just remember guys, few important things you need to uh, understand and uh, keeping in mind while using the cloud shell. One thing as has been stated, you have a pre-installed tools, AWS CLI, Python, and Node.js is a pre-installed and a lot of other tools. But uh, again, remember if you want to install, if you want to have any additional tools, you can install. I'm going to show you that even. And you have one GB of storage free per AWS region. This is also a very important aspect. That means this so files, what you can store is up to one GB per region. This one GB is reference is more about your home directory. It's not about the complete uh, shell. Whatever size of your files, it should not exceed more than one GB. If it's more, you know, it's going to truncate. So that's what uh, this one GB storage included. And you can have saved files in your home directory, which is a persistent storage. What the advantage of it, that means whenever, uh, you know, you are going to re-log in, you know, you're going, to, you're going to have all your files in your home directory without any deletion. Uh, what does it mean is, which includes your Dosh Bas RC or your history or any other files which you saved in home directory. And uh, other part, when I said here, you can install more tools, you can do that if anything, install out of your home directory again you relaunch uh, you know again your uh, 
uh, terminate and you know uh, deleting home directory which will completely wrap out your data that's why make sure you're going to install your home directory in a, in a persistent mode uh, that that way you can always re retain what files or uh, what installations you have made uh, based on your requirement so this is since it is a uh, clickable access you know for your convenience you no need to have uh, so many of softwares by default basic and very required softwares already amazon make sure it is being a part of this cloud shell so uh, let's jump into other few factors how we can use what you can do over here now as I mentioned, like, you know, you, it is just an, another terminal which you can run commands over it. Or if you look at AWS S3, by default, you have uh, AWS CLI install. So I am not conferred anything. As soon as I open this terminal, I'm just started uh, typing the commands as I need it. So here, if I want to create any commands or if you want any AWS resources, I can definitely do that. Now let's see that if I want to create a bucket, of called seven cloud shell uh, in us east one region i can just do that see this is been created so like this it's uh, based on your access of a corresponding resources whether you can create or not you know that iam role or the policies which is attached to your user will resemblance here but it is not limited to the cloud shell it is might be limited to your access what you have but if you have full access on all the resources you can do however you want whether you want creation deletion and you know uh, it will allow all this stuff for us now let's say that if i have aws s3 ls see it's got created for me a bucket now if i want to delete this same thing i should be able to delete it without having any issue because i have an access at this point of time since it's my test account delete bucket so bucket got deleted so that's that's how it is very easy to access guys and the other best benefit is if you want to know the history of your commands see um, these are the commands which are run now so it's going to keep uh, the files or it's going to keep uh, you know the history of commands what have been used because this is part of my history location and if i want to save any file like you know uh, test.txt in my home directory you know which is going to have that file got created now whenever i been you know i closed it and uh, I, if i want to reopen that okay now let me rephrase this See, once I logged in over here, now again, it is prepared terminal. So I came back to the same and, you know, I to retain my files. So that's the uh, the other benefit which you can have. So that since it is a cloud, you can access from anywhere since you have access. So other things which you need to keep in your mind while you are being accessing it, the important thing is you need to, you or user need to be part of AWS Cloud Shell full access policy. Then only you can get this Cloud Shell accessible for you from your, you know, AWS console. If you don't have that policy attached, then you might not be able to do that. And by default, if you look at here, I've uh, logged into a non, uh, you know, privileged user, but since it is uh, a load, you can do, to the root user see now i get into root so while you're getting into root you can install softwares you can install uh, you know any addition details if you want to be now i'm going to show you that too how this installation will work for you like for example let's see pip3 which i have and install and request and see, it is already been satisfied requirements. So if I want any additional uh, modules or functions, like if you want to install, I can do that. Now let's try to install Terraform in this instance. Now, if I want to install Terraform, first I would need to have uh, utilities to be run and I will have this utilities installation now i want to add the hashicorp repository repository got added and now i want to install terraform 
Now, let's install Terraform. After installing, I should be able to immediately use Terraform. Now, if you look at it over here, see my Terraform got installed. So like this, if you want any third-party tools, which is supported by Amazon Linux, you can install and you can start uh, using it. For example, MKDAR for TF test. And I can have Terraform in it, initialize here, and you know, the free nice emptied. So you can start working on it however you want. And uh, at the same time, it have a uh, Git pre-installed. So you can start leveraging Git immediately as soon as you have it. So like this, so many uh, apps, so many utilities and tools have been supported by Amazon Linux. You can start leveraging and installing it. And as I mentioned, you know, if you have to delete, or if you have to pretend this, it is a region specific. And and uh, once you delete here with the cloud shell, then all these installations is gone. But if you restart, then it's not an issue, but just to make sure. But since it is any time, all the time you can do it. So just make sure you have uh, enough space which you've been consumed it. But this is overlay. If you look at this is uh, another container which is running on from the Amazon side. Uh, but this is as simple as that. Your only restriction you have is up to one GB. And you know, inbound connections, you have certain limitations. And uh, you need to have uh, the policy attached for your user to make it work for you. So rest all it can take care and uh, how, how it's going to see of uh, your you know, Amazon Cloud Shell looks like. And uh, the other thing which I would like to share, guys, this is actually Amazon Linux 2 environment based. This shell comes up. So it have, uh, you know, long term support by Amazon itself. So you don't need to bother about the compliance. You don't need to bother about the uh, vulnerabilities and all that. That is completely managed by Amazon itself. So that, that's the uh, one of the other benefit uh, you can get by using this cloud shell. And let's get into the, some of the actions which we have over here. If you look at the, you can have a new tab set up. You can have multiple tabs set up environment. So it will be very handy. And if you want to split into rows, you can have a split and multiple rows for you, how you want. And the other part is like, you know, if you want to split into columns, like, you know, see, I have a split into columns with uh, multiple here, here I can access. So this is pretty, pretty much cool feature. Which, if you want, uh, you know, have multiple sessions, and the other benefit is like, you know, if you want to download, if you look at, I want to download specific file, which I create a text dot text. You know, I can have this download file text dot txt, and click on download. You know, I it's it's going to download the test.txt file which has been created. If you look at here, so this is the text file. And if you want to upload it, also you can do that. If you look at upload file, and if you want to select the maximum upload is five one GB. That's the limitation what you have. But other that you can select file and you can upload it. Whether it could be a script or whether you want to have any Excel, CSV, however you want. Right? If you are using any uh, automation for with, if you want to quick, if it's going to run, you can upload that as well. So that's that's a very handy of it. And if you look at if you want to restart the cloud shell for some reason, you can do that. And you know if you restart also. It's not going to bother. Let me go into restart and still your persistent storage, which is your home directory, will be available. Okay. And it's restarting. If you look at it, got restarted. See, stopping the environment and it's going to come back. So while it is coming back, I'll show you a few more, which is on the settings part. If you look at here, here you can adjust the font size, so small as small, medium, and large. And you can have a cloud shell theme, whether you want light or dark. And if you want to have a multi line text, like you know, you can enable this safe space based on multi line confirm it. So, you, these are the preferences which you can choose based on uh, uh, how optimal mode you have and how you want to manage your cloud shell. So, and the other part is like if you are 
deleting AWS Cloud Home Directory. Let's like, say that you want to completely delete and recreate it because you don't want all the files and you, you messed up with your home directory by, by creating a lot of duplicates and all that. You, if you don't want any of the data, then you know you simply delete the AWS Cloud Shell. If you look at here, I'm back to terminal now. It got restarted. And if I say that is my text, my text file is here. So it, within this person storage, it is going to retain my data. And, but when I delete this cloud shell, then that's where, you know, your home directory, your persistent storage is going to loss and, you know, you're not going to have those files and it cannot be retrievable. So let me do that here. So it's asking for a confirmation of delete and I'm clicking on delete. And if you look at here, now it is deleting for me from the terminal and it started again. And you know, environment is ready and it came here. Now, if I say LSF and LRT, it doesn't have any files because your persistent storage is gone due to I deleted the my home directory. So these are all the uh, advantages and you know, you have uh, Python also been installed if you want. And if you want to set up Python 3, you can do that. If you want to set up any of specific, uh, uh, you know, utilities you want to install, you can definitely do that. That's a really big benefit what you can get out of this cloud shell. And yeah, and other thing, as I mentioned, you need to have a region specific because for each region, your one GB of storage, which have been specific. So if you go to other region, you cannot have the same files uh, what you've been created over here, right? If I, let's say that if I want to have a touch here, I have a file file called one, two, three dot text. If I go to other region, this file is not available because this is a region specific. And and sessions about like, you know, sessions can make outbound connections, but you know, for inbound, it is been uh, uh, not allowed. Sessions cannot concretely connect to resources inside the VPC subnets, but that also on the near term roadmap, which they're going to enhance that. And in addition to the Python and node runtimes, it have a bash, PowerShell, JQ, Git, ECS CLI, SAM CLI, and uh, other tools have been installed. And you know, in terms of costing, you can use up to 10 concurrent shells for each region without any cost. That is awesome. And you have to only pay for the resources, AWS resources, which you have been used from the cloud shell. Like play that if you are creating an EC2 instance from this uh, cloud shell, then you can, uh, you know, that has to pay uh, for the EC2 resources, but not for the cloud shell. So that's the other advantage. And, uh, you know, there is a lot of other possibilities which you can have it because, you know, since it is given by a 1GP for each region, it, uh, you can really have a lot of scripting, a lot of uh, setup environment you can do over here, including Terraform if you want, I'm just saying, or if you want to Python to set up with an SDKs, you know, so many possibilities are there. It's and it's up to you how you want to leverage, how you want to extend the capabilities of interacting with an AWS. I hope this session is helpful and I hope you can start leveraging this AWS Cloud Shell as much as you can on your day-to-day -day work. And thank you for watching this. Have a great day, guys. I'll see you in next video.